Remember this video? Corey Henry hashtagged this duet with Jacob Collier, The Blues. It is also known as C Blues on this YouTube video that contains the same upload of the original Instagram video. You might be thinking, huh? I thought the blues was not. Yeah, it's crazy, right? It's arguably two of the best jazz keyboardist improvisers to rise up into fame this past decade. They've collided and highly abstracted an abstraction of some blues ideas, all in real time at 138 BPM. Yeah, so let's look at several elements from this mini jam to see how Jacob and Corey interact and also how they're just going with the vibe. You're probably wondering, how, how do you just go with the, how do you, how do you go with the, yeah, but let's look at the full transcription first and then we can discuss several interesting areas. I spent maybe about two hours pondering what time signature this whole thing was in, especially that first chunk. For example, was this bar a 7-8 bar? Or is it all in 4-4 and Jacob is just being Jacob and throwing us off? I mean, it confused me. I started tapping in quarters, eighths, sixteenths. One version with that one seven eight bar and then the rest four four and another version with just straight four four. I mean I kept alternating between the two because I would get different results every run through. I figured that the two bars before eighteen would be two four four bars with quarter note chords being played by Jacob to lead into a section that was most definitely in four four. But some run throughs ended up with me tapping on the downbeat to those quarters and others tapping on the upbeat. So in the end, I figured that maybe I can just transcribe Corey's line of essentially consistent 16 note runs. And synchronize Jacob hits and lines with him. So that's what I did. All right, so let's look at the first three or so bars. We start off with a collection of modes and scales that vaguely circle around a C minor sound. You have C mixolydian, C harmonic minor, and C Dorian, all with elements of chord arpeggiation, enclosures, and neighboring approach tones. Bar three is where we start seeing some blues lines with the E flat note leading to an E natural to open up and suggest more of the C blues consisting of A minor pentatonic blues and C minor pentatonic blues. Meanwhile, Jacob's bass lines and chords suggest a C minor sound with the collection of chords from the flatter side of the circle of fifths or the fourth side, or the more plagal side, if you want to call it that. But here's where it gets interesting. Chord goes from this figure that can be said to come from these scales to a completely different tonal area near F sharp. And look how he did it. He mixes the whole tone half tone scale or the octatonic scale with F sharp mixolydian. We then touch on a little bit of B major. Now let's look at how Jacob leads us into the section. We start off with C major, then we go to this E um, something 
chord. Uh, let's call it G Phrygian over E. The next chord is a D9 sus chord or a C major over D. Now, remember, they're technically vibing off each other, so it's interesting to note that Jacob changed his harmony right as Corey did. Remember that Corey's in F sharp major, and now Jacob is playing a C sharp 9 sus chord, which itself comes from F sharp major. So after playing around in this territory, he's now in this territory on the other side of the circle of fifths. Accordingly, he jumps a fourth to F sharp and gradually turns the dial of brightness back to C minor C blues with the 813 sus chord and the G, mm -hmm, G clash seven sus flat five. Bar six sounds like a temporary arrival back at home. Jacob is jamming on C and F with a wonky backbeat. Corey is playing G minor blues mixed in with enclosures and chromatic approach tones. He then plays an ascending line mixing C Dorian sounds with C blues. And under that, Jacob plays his signature soul blues grace note chords. Okay, this section. Well, all right. Oof. Corey starts off with an ascending F mixolydian line mixed in with an E lydian line. F major chord and neighboring steps, and then E flat. He starts playing some lines related to a tonality Jacob introduced two bars ago. This tonality is known as E super Lydian. Okay, but how how do you know that this is super Lydian and not just some other chord? Well, take a look at this interview. It was filmed in early 2015, and this is arguably one of the first instances in which Jacob publicly shares about his idea of super Lydian. Here you can see a similar chord. So this is the first chord. The second chord I think is this. It's, it's kind of a fun chord. Um, and this one, you could say that's E super ultra Lydian, um, which is like my own invention, but um, it's not really. It's kind of like C sharp major seven over E, but it's made up of fifths, so that's kind of like going Let's do a brief overview on how to derive a super Lydian chord, the kind that Jacob might use. Take an E major 9 chord, it can be interpreted as a polychord, B major over E major, with a B note being shared between the two chords. What's important to note here is that the B major is a fifth above E major, and that it comes from a slightly brighter key in the circle of fifths. Let's add to this chord. Now let's do F sharp major over B major over E major. That is an E major 13 sharp 11 or an E Lydian chord. If you continue this pattern, just one more key a fifth above, and no, don't worry, I'm not gonna go all the way like I did on my largest chord video. You would end up with C sharp major over F sharp major over B major over E major. This is where we start to get into the super Lydian territory, at least the way Jacob thinks about it. So don't worry if you don't really get it completely just yet, I'll do future videos on this topic. So this E super Lydian is interesting in that the D flat major chord or the C sharp major chord moves plagally to E flat minor or D sharp minor and sometimes to G flat major, like a one two chord movement in major or a one four chord movement in major. Look how it goes back and forth between the two. When the A natural bass note is under the two or the four chord, it's essentially A Lydian. With Corey, it's not until bar 11, which is two bars after Jacob played E super Lydian, that he responds to that tonality. He plays F sharp major with displaced and chopped 16th note climbs and falls. Then with F sharp mix a Lydian. This part is amazing because they sync up on their accents. And yet another chord with super Lydian. Nice. Corey does this amazing thing that brings us from F sharp major, E flat minor to C blues. And under that, Jacob plays some more recognizable jazz chords. Now we sound like we're building and cadencing somewhere. 
But judging from Corey's lines alone, it sounds like he's outlining a typical jazz cadence of three, six, two, five, one. But that's not exactly how it happens. Remember that it could be argued that he's thinking of these turnarounds and is just extending them while reacting in real time, or that he's doing something completely different and going with the flow. I mean, could this uh, 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 be his realization that he was not going to land on one after all? And that he still has to come up with one bar to land on one? Is this too deep? Meanwhile, Jacob is building these eighth note lines that eventually build up to bar 18. Look at these chords. C major over D, D major over E, G major over F, F major over F sharp, F sharp major over G sharp, A flat major over E flat, A flat 9 sus, and B flat major 9. We could spend days and days analyzing why this could work, or we can just call it good voice leading that takes us somewhere, builds tension, and lands back home. I mean, you could look at this as a 2-5-1, where the 2 section starts with 2, and the 5 section is filled with tension from the darker side of the circle of fifths in relation to where our anticipated home is, which is C major. In other words, these are some chords you would find over a G dominant 7 chord, the 5 of C major. And here we are. Bar 18 is clearly an arrival point. Corey is going crazy with his B melodic minor line plus E flat and his and Jacob is laying down a solid backbeat in C. As Jacob transitions to F minor 7-ish, Corey plays this nice descending C blues line with nicely placed inflections. Jacob plays an E7 chord and an A7 chord, which sound like he's cadencing on 3 and 6, approaching 2 in the key of C, which is D. He hits D as a bass note, but clearly lines out C blues in his right hand, while Corey plays some more tasty C blues. As you may already know, Jacob loves playing fives and holding a top note above a changing harmony. By themselves, these chords are pretty tasty, but superimposing Corey's whack constant 16th note lines over that, man, that's, that's something else. C blues, C sharp octatonic, F sharp diminished, B melodic minor, C octatonic, E major, C blues, F blues, C blues, F major, C Dorian, C7 sharp 9. There's so much borrowing from nearby related keys as well as distant ones. And it's these seamless lines that Corey has in his fingers and Jacob's filthy chords that make this jam mind-blowing. It's even crazier to note that Jacob's chords tend to be four to five notes max. Since this is all happening in real time, they might occasionally create some clashing harmonies for a beat or two. But that's okay, because the groove is happening and the lines connect well with the next microphases. It's those weird, unexpectedly placed crunch moments that give us the exciting feeling from this duet. To help you further understand the C Blues Jam even further, I've created several digital goodies that break it down for you in terms of chords and licks, or a full analysis. Whatever works best for you. Thanks so much for watching this transcription breakdown. If you'd like to see more of this genre, please let me know down in the comments. Stay tuned for further channel announcements and content, and we'll see you next time.